one. Welcome to sunny Winter Haven, Florida. I'm Lane Dog Bowers, and I want you to realize that you are greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. I'm sorry my voice is a little hoarse today, but you know what? I've got something real exciting for you. I want you to read this verse. This is so cool. Uh, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he said this prayer to, when he was praying to the Father. He said, I have finished the work which you have given to me. That's John 17, 4. You know, it's amazing. You know, Jesus, how could he pray that? He hadn't even been crucified at this point. Well, the thing to realize is that it says in the Bible in Revelation that before the foundation of the world, Jesus was slain. That means that every need that you will ever have, God provided that provision for it long before you ever had a need. And that is really great news. I mean, because when, you know, the question is, you know, how do you walk in this provision? How do you walk in this finished work of Jesus? You know, because it says that um, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. That's past tense. So at the cross, God unleashed these blessings, not because of anything we did, but what he has done. So how do you walk in this finished work of where everything is already done? Well, as with everything else, we look to our best source for knowledge and wisdom, Jesus. Now, when Jesus was on the earth, you know, he came up to uh, a man who had a withered hand, and he said, stretch forth your hand, and his hand was made completely whole. Now, you can't say that to a man with a withered hand unless he could use his imagination and his faith to see clearly that God had already provided long before for that man a healthy and whole hand. You know, when he came up to that man that was uh, lame, he said, take up your bed and walk. You know, you can't see, look, when you look at what's in front of you a lot of times, you have to use your imagination, you have to use your faith and your imagination to see the provision that God has already supplied for you. You know, that's a powerful thing. It's so powerful. So, you know, I was thinking about it, 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 it kind of sad, I was, in, I was in a church not too long ago and I saw this pastor put three words up uh, on the screen and it said, um, wealth, health, and happiness. And he basically said, you know, does God want you wealthy, does God want you healthy, does God want you happy? And he said, no, no, no. And man, I was shocked when I saw that. I think you have to be supernaturally blind not to see that, you know, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that although he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor at the cross so that we, through his poverty at the cross, might be made rich. You know, by his stripes we are healed. You know, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and hath no sorrow with it. I think what he meant to say is he doesn't want, God doesn't want you chasing after riches. That would have made more sense to me. But as far as your health, by his stripes, we are healed. You know, that's provision that God has for us. So if you're looking at a situation where you're in the hospital or you're facing some trauma, it's very hard. I'm not telling you to ignore what's in front of you. Listen to your doctors. Do your due diligence. But as far as your faith, apply it to the words that God says about that situation. You know, if you're believing for more provision for your family, if you want more than a job, you want, you know, a position. If you envision yourself spending more time with your kids and doing something that brings great joy and tons of provision, and that, and you know, and you, you can find in the Bible the verses that show that this is truly something that God wants for you, you need to use your faith and your imagination for that and walk in that. And so what does that mean? I think practically what that means is that you need to have a clear vision, like I said before, crystal clear vision of what you want and what you believe God has for you. And then you need to use your faith by finding the words in the Bible and stand on it. You know what I mean? Jesus walked in that it is done. You know, when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was such tremendous pressure on him mentally and emotionally that he sweat great drops of blood. And you know, that was to redeem us. It says in the Bible that we have the mind of Christ. You know what I mean? That, those great drops of blood, I'm sure, were from the tremendous stress 
when Jesus started to feel the emotional pain and the weight of all of our sins. And he took all that for us so that we could receive all the blessings. So, I'm believing for a miracle for you today. Turn to God's word. Stand. You know, again, my fav one of my favorite verses. Return to the stronghold, you prisoner of hope. Even today, I declare, I will restore double on you. I'm believing for a miracle for you today, a provision. Walk in the finished work of what Jesus has done. Bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Don't ignore your situation, but don't let it define you. Let God's words define you. Have a great day and expect a miracle. Thank <laughs> you.